Hi, I'm Ernie Zor, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate Cuyahoga County Probate Forms Version 4 by completing a set of forms for a small probate estate. Cuyahoga 4 is up on my screen right now, and what you're seeing is the main window. The left side is called the tree view, and it outlines the process for completing the forms. I'm going to follow that outline by starting with Step 1 completing the general information worksheet. What you see on the right side of the display is the form window and the first form you see is the general information worksheet. It's the logical place to start working on a probate file because it contains much of the basic information that's repeated on the other forms. For example, the case number and the case name, the decedent's name and address, the date of death, and by the way Although I'm starting with the general information worksheet, you can display and complete any form or worksheet in any order. Regardless, it makes sense to follow our recommended order. Now, I've begun completing the general information worksheet so you can see how it's done. Basically, I'm just tabbing from field to field and making my entries. Now, as I tab down the form, I think you, you'll notice that you're going to see some of the fields are already completed, like the attorney and the judge fields, the county name field. That information is coming from the default file, which you can customize so that every new file you start has those fields completed already. In the default file, any field on any form can be defaulted. It's handy. I've completed the top section here, and I'm going to stop and uh, instead I'm going to open a file that I've prepared that already has the general information completed all the way down and that way I don't need to waste time as I complete 50 fields. I'll scroll down so that you can get an idea of what type of information the worksheet contains. But other than that, let's move on to step two, completing the next akin worksheet. And to do that I'm going to click the button here on the top of the screen to display the next of kin worksheet. Now, by the way, the next of kin worksheet is not only for next of kin, it's also where you would list the spouse, children, beneficiaries, and other interested parties such as insurance companies, stock transfer agents, creditors, or appraisers. You'll notice that the surviving spouse and the applicant from the general information worksheet have already been transferred. Our example has a surviving spouse and two children and in this case because one child is co-executrix and transferred to the worksheet automatically I only need to enter the second child which I will do right now. I'm just going to put in the name, the address, and the st city, state, and zip. Some of these other fields aren't necessary for the forms that we're going to do. But here's the neat part. Cuyahoga 4 lets you send any or all of these people to any or all of the forms listed to the right. All you need to do is to check the appropriate box. I'll show you. I'll check these boxes right now. To send the spouse Joanne to the front and back sides of Form 1.0, I just cursor over to the group of check boxes and I click on 1.0F and 1.0B for the back side of the form. Joanne's signature will also be required on the Notice of Probate form. I'll check 2.0, the application for authority to administer 4.0, the notice of inventory 6.0 and the waiver of notice of hearing and consent to account forms thir form 13.7 B now since I'm already here at the same time I may as well send the two children to these required forms so I will quickly go through here and check those boxes off for the two kids and you have to take my word for it at this time that all of these forms that I'm checking are being instantly and automatically completed. You're going to see that in a moment. Now, if you're ever in doubt about the complete name of a form, you can right-click your mouse on the form number next to the checkbox, and the complete name of the form will appear in a pop-up window. And with that, that brings us to step three, completing the asset worksheet. This example we're working with has household goods and furniture, a few bank accounts, some stocks, a parcel of real estate, and some miscellaneous property. I'll press the Asset Worksheet button so I can get started. Now, I call it the Asset Worksheet, but it's really for any type of receipt or income. Now, you'll find that the Asset Worksheet is not very different from the KIN Worksheet. I'll enter a parcel of real estate, and uh, what I'm going to do is, I, because the legal description is so long, I'm going to paste it in so I don't have to type it in. 
and I'll complete the value field and with that note the select button I'm going to click on the button and you'll see the dialog that pops up contains a list of people from the kin worksheet this list can be used to designate any one or group of persons as beneficiaries or transferees I'll check Joanne and I'll close this dialog and go back to the worksheet one thing about the asset worksheet is that there's much more information required with respect to assets than there is with respect to kin therefore in order to access all the fields you have to use these set buttons to the far right watch I'll click on the set button and I'll send this real estate to form 4.0 authority to administer form 6.0 the inventory form 12 the form 12.0 and 12.1 which is a certificate of transfer set and form 13 uh, fiduciary's account there now if you're wondering about form 3.0 appointment of appraiser form I'm really going to need two entries because of the way form 3 is laid out if you've ever seen the printed form it has about an inch of space for the real estate description and obviously a lengthy complete legal description is not going to fit in that space nor is it even expected by the court the easy way around that is to make a short entry with only an address in it and send that only to form 3.0 and that's why I'm going to insert a second real estate entry with just the abbreviated description which is amounts to the address and I will send that I'll put in the value um, but I'm going to send that only to form 3.0 now like the next to kin worksheet if you right click on a form number you'll see the complete name in a pop-up okay I'll close that dialog and return to the worksheet uh, and I also mentioned that also like the kin worksheet all these forms are completed by checking those boxes with the exception that a few a few of the forms require that I categorize the property and that's so Cuyahoga form knows whether an item is real estate or a motor vehicle or a grand piano I'll click on the category set button and choose a category for the forms that require it I'll do this for both entries now you don't need to know which forms require it or what the appropriate categories are Cuyahoga Fort takes care of all that all you have to do is go down the list and make your selections for the short entry that would be form sending it to form 3 and for the long entry that would be sending it to form 4 6 and 13 you'll notice that there's a real estate button where I can enter additional information about the real estate most of that information isn't required for the forms that I'm mentioning so I won't get into that now incidentally one of the reasons you categorize an item is because some forms like the inventory and account forms require subtotals and that's how Cuyahoga form knows which category in which to place an items value there are about a dozen items of property in this estate and I've already shown you how to enter one so to save time I'm gonna open a file that I prepared in advance so you don't have to watch me enter all these items now along the way I've skipped a few things like confidential personal identifiers and distributions in kind and I did that in order to keep the video short so let's keep moving on and, and we're gonna go to uh, step four which is completing the expense worksheet having learned how to make entries on the kin and asset worksheets you won't see anything new on the expense worksheet I'll click on the expense worksheet button right now so we can take a look and as I enter the first expense you'll see that the list of forms to which expenses can be sent is much smaller than it was on the asset worksheet so everything's right there and I don't need to click on a button to see a list I'm going to put in um, I'm gonna send it to form yeah 13.0 and I'll categorize it uh, in fact I think it's one of the only items that needs to be categorized actually and that would be uh, administrative expenses and um, and that's it really that, that's about all that's involved and, and uh, all the expenses are done in the same way and I've got about a dozen expenses in, 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 and I prepared a file that's got them in there so we can save some time 
Um, so I'm going to open the, uh, the file that I prepared and we'll even take a quick peek at the expense worksheet so you can see it all filled out. There we go. There's all the expenses. And that actually brings us to step five, which is the time and services worksheet. Now, completing the time and services worksheet is kind of optional. It can be used for general record keeping and to complete the application for uh, and judgment entry for attorney fees. The worksheet is the same as the other ones, and I'm going to skip it, which brings us to step six, completing and displaying the forms. Now, when you display the forms, you'll see that for the most part, they're already complete. In some instances, a form may require additional information that's not in the worksheets. An example might be Form 1, which I guess I'll get that on the screen right now. And you'll see that the caption is complete. The names are already on the form. And if we move toward the bottom, uh, I'll put an X in the first checkbox there. And that's it for page 1. Um, I will press on the paging button and I think there's a checkbox at the bottom I'll check the wills not uh, the second checkbox there yep and uh, and that's it for form one anyway but I want to prepare more than just form one so let's review the the rest of the list and and what you're gonna find is like I said some forms have just a few fields to complete, like Form 1. We just had two checkboxes to check. Other forms, like the inventory and the account, are completed in their entirety, and you don't have to do a thing. It depends on the form. Let's take a quick look. Form 2.0. Nothing to complete on page 1. Let's go to page 2. I'll check the, one of these boxes here, and I'll also check attorney under the signature line. The judgment entry, you know, that would be completed by the court, and that essentially is um, Form 2. So let's take a look at Form 3 now. And I am going to check the box that says accept the auditor's value. I think that's the first check box there. And page two, which will page two, is already complete. There's nothing to do. So again, it was just a matter of checking one box, and that was all that needed to be done. Let's take a look at form four. On page one, again, all I'm going to do is check a box. I'll check the box that says decedent's will has been admitted to probate. So that's the second box there. And a little farther down, I'll, I'll check the first box there that says that no bond is required. And guess what? Form 4 is complete. We'll go and take a look at form t page 2, and we see that there's nothing there to do except the judgment entry, which the court would f complete that normally. And that will move us over to form 6, and I think what we're going to find out with form 6 is that both pages are completed in their entirety. I could, yeah, there we go. And, and then again, the judgment entry, I'm, we're just going to leave that blank. Let's go to Form 12.0. I'll check the, uh, the second box there that says the decedent died test date. And there we go. When I press Tab, that field fell, f f filled in. And um, let's go to page... Oh, uh, yeah, you know what? I should put in the date there that it was that was admitted on. I'll make up a date there. There we go. And um, let's page, we'll go to page two. Looks to me like it's completed in its entirety. And that brings us to what? Form 13. This is uh, uh, what I'm going to do when I look at Form 13. I'll check the box that says this is a final account, and that's it. I think when we go to page two, we're going to find out that it's already completed in its entirety. And if we go to form 13.1, which is the next in line, we're going to see that that is completed its entirety. Actually, 
three pages of it. And uh, so I'll page there and you'll get to see the second page. And I'll hit the paging button again so you, you can see the third page. And there it is. One more form. Let's take a look at form 13.7B, that waiver and consent. And I think what we're going to find out is that uh, we can put in the amount of the attorney fees. I don't have an amount to put in there, but we would put them in. And that's all. That, that otherwise, that form is completed in its entirety, which brings us to step seven, previewing and printing the forms. The print button at the, that you see at the top, that prints what's on your screen. However, the file menu has a print command that brings up a select forms dialog, which I'll show you right now. And you'll see several pages of check boxes. Note that the form that's on your screen is already checked. Um, by checking any additional boxes, I can batch print a complete set of forms. And that's what I'm going to do right now, is I'm going to check the boxes for Form 1.0. I'm going to check the box for Form 3.0 for form 4.0 and I'll go over to the next tab and I'll check the box for form 6.0 and 6.1 and I think I'm going to go to, to the, the box for form 12.0 and 12.1 13.0 and 13.1 and 13.7b which is already checked because we, that's the one we were looking at when we clicked um, now what you're now now I'm going to click the print button and what you're going to see is a word processing document that contains all the forms. It looks really good. And all the forms are ready to be signed. They're ready to be filed. I'll scroll through so that you can kind of see. And, and while I'm scrolling, I'll mention that while it's in Word, you can do a lot of different things to it. You can save it as a PDF file. You can attach the PDF file to an email with instructions to your client to say, hey, look this over, print it out, bring it to court with you, sign it and bring it to court with you tomorrow morning. You can spell check a legal description of real estate. You can make a marginal note if you had to say something uh, extraordinary to the judge or the magistrate. Anything is possible because it's an ordinary word processing document. Now, the nice thing is that Word also accommodates the more advanced functions supported by your printer, and that would include printing non-sequential pages, duplex printing, which is front and back printing, and any other function that your printer supports. I'm going to close Word right now and go back to Cuyahoga 4, and very quickly, there's one more thing I wanted to show you. Let's say a client comes into the, into the office and says, hey, I know you've got all the papers done, but one of the bank accounts has an incorrect balance. Ordinarily, that could be a, 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 a minor disaster in a way because you've got you might have to you know change subtotals and add things up and whatever. But here's how quickly it can be done in Cuyahoga Four. I just go to the asset worksheet and I change the amount. Uh, the bank account it would be this yeah that's okay and uh, I'll check uh, I'll change that amount and and with just that correction the entire set of probates uh, forms is ready to be printed again from beginning to end in record time all the math is redone all the repetitive information is entered and it's all done in the time it took me to just change that amount try that with the static web PDF forms you'd be wasting a lot of time time that law offices probably don't have to waste and with that, um, I, that's it. I've used my allotted time, so I want to give you my sincere thanks for watching and wish that you have a good day. Take care.